Hi, I'm sure like me you have been watching Photonic Induction's recent videos on the Mercury Arc valve that can be used as a type of rectifier and it got me thinking about rectifiers in general. Um, since about 1970 those Mercury Arc rect rectifiers have no longer been used and they've been replaced by semiconductor devices. However, we've not really seen any change in technology since that point. So I thought we'd have a discussion about full bridge rectifier and also would have a look at if there are any improvements that we can have over the standard rectifiers that we've got pictured on the bench here. So the full bridge rectifier is an arrangement of standard rectifier diodes such that when you put an AC signal into the input terminals you get a fully rectified DC output on the two output terminals. So if you imagine that you have actually grounded one of the legs here and you've probed this point here what you'd have going in is this AC waveform here. What you'd see at the output is basically the same signal here but on the negative half of the waveform you'll see it on the positive side here. So basically it keeps the output always positive going. That point where it would normally go negative the diodes work in the opposite direction and it allows us to fully rectify the output. However there are some problems with this particular design, not many, uh, but there are some non-ideal properties of the diodes such as the fact that they have a forward voltage drop uh, and this can be on rectifier diodes anywhere from 0.6 volts up to a volt depending on how much current you put, current you're putting through. It can probably be far worse than that with very specific devices but typically you're going to expect some voltage to be dropped in this diode and that can result in heat dissipation and therefore may lead to quite a significant loss in efficiency in your design. So to support some of the testing we're going to do today I've had some new PCBs made at PCBWay. For some reason they've sent it in a old box. Uh, but what we've got in here are some new PCBs and also a stencil to solder some very fine parts that we're going to try out today on this PCB. And a quick reminder about PCBWay's capabilities. They do have a wide range of facilities available starting from manufacturing your standard FR4 boards through to aluminium backed, copper backed, even the flexi rigid PCB starting from $111 and they also do assembly services where either they can order the parts for you or you can provide them and they'll assemble them onto the top and bottom of your PCB. And so here is our PCB. This time I went for the matte green finish because I hadn't seen it in person but it is actually really quite a nice finish. I know with the matte black surface I always found that it was quite difficult to keep it completely clean. It showed up marks really easily but this matte green doesn't seem to suffer from the same problem. If I rub my fingers on it, you can't see any residue or anything like that from where you've touched it. So that does look to be a really nice PCB. We've got quite a wide range of geometries on the PCB from these 10 mm SMD capacitors down to this very fine pitched component here. Absolutely no problem with the registration of the solder mask and the etching of the PCB here. So that all looks really good. So looking at the schematic here in Altium Designer, what we've got is a standard full bridge rectifier circuit first of all. So this is four rectifier diodes as you can see here. We've got two capacitors on the output, so a ceramic and an electrolytic capacitor. That is to keep everything equal on each of these designs. And then we've got a couple of sense resistors each side just in case we want to have a look at the current on each side of the rectifier. And we've got a terminal for our AC coming in and I rectified AC coming out, or DC at this point. The next design is using an active bridge rectifier. So this is quite an interesting chip and synchronous rectifiers are not new. They're very commonly used in switch mode power supplies. However, what this chip does is it basically brings synchronous rectification into a bridge rectifier topology. So let's take a quick look at the data sheet now here's the data sheet and they actually try and call it an ideal diode bridge controller and the reason they're saying that is because they're trying to eliminate the non-ideal parameters of a standard bridge rectifier that uses diodes. So what we've got are four external MOSFETs of your choosing so you can pick those according to your application and then we've got a controller here which is what is actually driving the gate on each of these MOSFETs. And if we take a look at the symbol for the MOSFET if this chip wasn't here this would still operate as a full bridge rectifier because all of these MOSFETs have an internal body diode. However once there is enough voltage for this chip to drive the gate on each of these MOSFETs what happens is the MOSFET shorts out this diode and basically the only losses that we're seeing 
are the on resistance of each of these MOSFETs. Now, I assume there probably are some losses as a result of the quiescent current of this LT4320. So let's take a look in the data sheet and see what that is. And here are the numbers that we're interested in. So the input current at 9 volts is about 50 microamps or so. At 72 volts, which is the maximum, I think, for this chip, we're probably going to see somewhere in the region of 350 microamps. So we are going to see some losses, but that is pretty small. Nothing really too much to worry about. Finally, we have a sort of hybrid approach using this dedicated chip here. So this is the OM Semiconductor NMLU1210 full bridge rectifier. And this is kind of a hybrid of the two. So basically what we've got is a pair of Schottky diodes at the top. But what's happening is we've got a couple of MOSFETs switching the low side. So when we've got this side positive going, obviously we've got current going through this diode through to the output. What it's also doing is turning on this MOSFET here. And that allows current to flow in this direction through here and through to our circuit. And then that just repeats in the other direction. So basically we're reducing our losses quite considerably. We certainly don't have our two 0 0.6 volt drops that we would see on a full bridge rectifier circuit using normal diodes. Now when it comes to parts cost, there's quite a variance here between these three implementations. So for our standard bridge rectifier, this can be very wide depending on your particular application. So if this is particularly low current, you could use some really cheap diodes and probably get a bridge rectifier for about 10 cents or something like that. For very high current applications, obviously this could be thousands of pounds potentially depending on uh, what you're trying to do here. Um, what I've picked here is some SMA diodes. These are rated for 5 amps. These are coming in at 30 cents each. So this implementation here is costing $1.20 at standard sort of distributor prices. Then if we look at the active synchronous bridge, this LT part is very expensive. So £6.60 just for the controller. And then you have to buy some MOSFETs as well. However, the nice thing is that effectively this controller is load independent. All it's doing is switching some MOSFETs and it's doing that very close to the zero crossing point. Basically, as soon as it's able to, it's starting to drive that gate. And therefore, it can actually drive very, very large MOSFETs with high gate capacitance because we're not trying to switch on when there's already quite a high load. We're doing it close to the zero crossing point. And therefore, in higher current applications, this starts to make a lot more sense because then our cost is on the MOSFETs, but we're still possibly getting those efficiency savings. Uh, obviously, if it's an application where you're just drawing 10 milliamps, this is just not really the solution for you, unless you're really trying to harvest every little bit of energy that you can. Then finally, um, the hybrid MOSFET diode bridge rectifier, these are coming at £1.35 each, so a fairly reasonable price, quite similar to the bridge rectifier at the top here, um, just slightly more expensive, slightly lower current rating, so this one is only rated to 3.2 amps, uh, I think these MOSFETs are good for probably about 10 amps, if I remember correctly, something like that. So what we're going to do is we'll just solder up the parts. I'll leave off these large capacitors first of all, because I want to have a look at what the waveform looks like once it's been rectified. And then what we'll do is we'll actually load these up, probably with something close to 3 amps, so that we're really putting some current through these bridge rectifiers. And we'll have a look at the thermals and see what the difference is. And also, hopefully, we'll be able to measure the loss between each side of the rectifier board. So that's all soldered up. I've got a 12 ohm load here which we'll use to load down each of the channels. So let's take a look at what the waveforms look like without the large capacitors on the output. So the more astute of you will have noticed that I accidentally had some part numbers for Schottky diodes on the standard full bridge rectifier circuit. I have actually placed 1N4007s there instead. And this is what the waveforms look like. So our input is in blue, and you can see it's about 20 volts peak to peak or 10 volts peak. And then on the output, we have our 12 ohm load resistor, and that's giving us a load of about 430 milliamps at the moment. And what you can see is that there is a voltage drop of about 1.42 volts, and that is two diode voltage drops, because in the full bridge rectifier circuit, there's actually always two diodes conducting at once in series, and therefore we have quite a bit of loss. And just with this 430 milliamp load, we are wasting about 600 milliwatts just in those diodes. So quite a bit of loss there. Uh, other than that, you can see it basically tracks the incoming waveform. 
but on the negative going part of the incoming waveform it is rectified and still positive on this side. Next up we've got the Linear Technology LT4320 Ideal Diode configuration and at the top of the waveform we're basically getting no loss, there's hardly any voltage drop to speak of. Earlier on in the waveform we're getting quite a bit of distortion along here. You can see below about 8 volts we have a bit of hysteresis and what I think that is is the MOSFETs not fully turning on. And actually it's nothing to do with the MOSFETs, it's a spec point that I've missed. This LT4320 needs 9 volts before it starts operating, so that's why we're not seeing it switching fully on until around 8 or 9 volts in that waveform. And then here is our MOSFET diode hybrid bridge rectifier, and this waveform looks really nice. We've just got a little bit of loss at the top here, about 200 millivolts or so, so in the end with this half an amp load we're dissipating about 100 milliwatts, so quite a lot of a saving compared to the standard full bridge rectifier circuit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to load these up. Um, given that these 1N4007s have a maximum of a 1 amp rating, that's what I'm going to test all of these at, and we're going to try and get some thermal images to try and see what the heating in each of these areas look like, and we'll also just do a few calculations and we can look at what the losses actually look like. So I ran each of the bridge rectifiers with the 12 ohm resistor and adjusted the input voltage so that we had a 1 amp RMS input current. Uh, this is about the maximum that we can drive these 1N4007 diodes at and it gave us an efficiency of 87%. So that's 87% before any other kind of conversion that you might have in your typical application. So we're losing 13% of our power in these diodes and as a result these diodes were peaking at over 100 degrees C, so you're getting really quite toasty, uh, but that is the maximum current that we can drive through these diodes. The hybrid MOSFET diode bridge rectifier was running still quite warm, 74 degrees C, but we were only losing 6% of our energy in the actual chip itself. And because it's quite a small chip, obviously the heating um, is a lot more dense, so this will get quite warm. Uh, but yeah, we, it was about... 94% efficiency and then finally our active synchronous bridge or the ideal diode giving us about 96% efficiency. Now because this is spread over four MOSFETs, quite chunky uh, SOIC package MOSFETs, we weren't seeing temperatures very high. It was in fact only 34 degrees C. So really very low heating in these devices. We're losing about 4% of the power in those switching devices. Now obviously you may be able to improve your efficiency of your standard bridge rectifier by careful choice of the diodes but it is very application specific and you're not going to be able to use the most efficient solution necessarily for your application. For example, if you were trying to design a bridge rectifier for the input to your switch road power supply running from the mains, you're not going to be able to use Schottky diodes because they're just not available with the reverse breakdown voltage that you might be after. And you're going to have to make those kind of trade-offs when you're picking your solution. However, I thought it was quite interesting in this video just to cover some of the other techniques that are possible for providing your AC to DC conversion. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. A big thank you to PCBWay for this very high quality PCB and I do really like the matte green finish. So if you are thinking about getting a low cost PCB made, don't forget to click on PCBWay's link in the description down below. Big thank you to my Patreon supporters and until next time, thanks for watching.